Good morning. Welcome to today's our presentation. Please remember to silence your cell phones and put them away. Here to introduce today's presenter is Natalie Jensen. I have known Isabel since the sixth grade. Both of us come to Rowe Cross as new students, we, quick, we quickly became friends. Though the beginning of that friendship was rather rocky, as she could not always remember my name. After that little hurdle, our long friendship began with most of our conversations being about our common favorite TV show, Criminal Minds, and our obsession with Spencer Meek. I cannot say that I'm not surprised that Isabel chose this topic. After knowing Isabel for a long time, no one surprises me anymore. With no further ado, here's Isabel Ajla with a hard J with the effects of globalization on violent crimes, particularly serial killers. There is a direct correlation between globalization and violent crime. This is the result of industrialization, political upheaval, and social unrest. Not only has globalization created tensions in society, it has also had destabilizing effects on traditional family values. The Federal Bureau of Investigation in the United States defines violent crimes as offenses and crimes which involve force or threats of violence. It also deems violent crime to be composed of four offenses in descending order. Murder and non-negligent manslaughter, forcible rape, robbery, and aggravated assault. First, murder and non-negligent manslaughter, which is any death caused by injuries received in any kind of conflict, assault, or commission of a crime committed willfully by one human being to another. Second, forcible rape, which is sexual intercourse carried out against the recipient's will or without their consent, under force or the threat of force. Third, robbery, which is the attempt or the act of taking a possession or something of value from the custody of an individual or group of individuals under forcible compulsion or threats of force. Lastly, we have aggravated assault, which is defined as the act of committing an attack or assault by one individual or a group of individuals on another to get an injury. Although arson defined as any willful or malicious attempt to destroy the personal property of another by means of burning or fire is also a crime of violence, it is considered in conjunction with four salient violent crimes. Comparing violent crimes globally is a very complicated and challenging process. The main problem with this process is that all countries have different standards of what exactly constitutes a violent crime. For example, El Salvador doesn't consider arson as a violent crime, while the United States does. Additionally, countries have very different procedures and methodologies for tracking crime statistics, which intensifies the difficulty of comparing. However, some countries clearly lead in the number of violent crimes committed. El Salvador is at the top of the homicide rates with a rate of 52.02 incidents per 100,000 people. But Swano leads the rape rates with 92.93 incidents per 100,000 people. Costa Rica is first in the robbery rates with an extremely high rate of 1,587.5 incidents per 100,000 people. The rate of aggravated assaults is not as well measured as these other three. However, East Rotini and the Bahamas lead with rates of 1,400 incidents per 100,000 people. From this data, we can gather that countries in Latin America, South America, Central America, and Africa all clearly have the highest homicide, incidence of rape, robbery, and aggravated assault rates out of all countries measured. There are numerous and varied explanations for why individuals commit violent crimes. The three main explanations are biological factors, psychological theories, and sociological theories. The biological factors explanation state that there is a medical reason for people to have violent behavior. The prefrontal cortex is the part of the brain that regulates self-control. This theory states that individuals who commit crimes or have antisocial or violent <laughs> behavior may have an underdeveloped or damaged prefrontal cortex. This would be supported by the fact that adolescents commit delinquent acts and criminal behavior more frequently than adults, and the prefrontal cortex doesn't fully develop until the mid-20s. Lower volumes of the amygdala, which is a part of the brain, and lower anterior cingulate cortex activity have also been linked to violent and criminal behavior. Other medical factors that have been linked to criminal or violent behavior are high levels of testosterone, which is a hormone, high levels of dopamine, and low levels of serotonin, 
both of which are neurotransmitters. There are two main explanations for this psychological theory. The first is the behavioral theory, which states that criminal and violent behavior is a learned response to situations in which individuals have been placed. The second is the cognitive theory, which says that criminals have lower moral judgment or less of an ability to distinguish between right and wrong. Finally, we have sociological theory, which will be our focus as it will be the most important in understanding the connection between globalization and violent crimes. There are three primary perspectives regarding social explanations for crime, violent behavior, or deviance, which is any behavior that violates social norms and often overlaps with crime or violent behavior. The first is the Chicago School Theory, which states that crime is influenced by neighborhood dynamics, such as poor housing and healthcare, and other forms of socioeconomic disadvantage, rather than individuals and their actions. The second is a subcultural theory. This states that youths and adolescents from lower socioeconomic backgrounds may create their own subcultural system based on cultural values that may be more inclined to criminal and violent tendencies rather than the cultural values of their own society. Third, and most directly related to globalization, is the social strain typology. Social strain typology proposes the idea that violent and deviant behavior can be understood based on their adherence to cultural values and social values. There are two types of globalization, economic globalization and cultural globalization. Economic globalization is defined as the increase in the exchange of goods, services, and products between countries on an international level. It also refers to how global economies are becoming increasingly dependent on each other because of this exchange. This is the result of improved transportation and communication due to the advancement of science and technologies. It is an irreversible process and will continue to intensify as time passes. In this paper, we will be focusing primarily on cultural globalization, as it is the reason for the observed increase in violent crime due to it affecting people's day to day lives and cultural values on a larger scale. Culture is defined by sociologists as all of the products of the society that are created over time and shared. These products are varied, ranging from ideas to food to religions. Our culture is the reason why we think the way we think, act the way that we act, and behave the way that we behave. Cultural globalization is the interaction between people in different communities on a global scale, often resulting in the combination of different cultures and ideas. This phenomenon has been going on for thousands of years through the processes of acculturation, adaptation, diffusion, and assimilation. However, Due to this age of globalization, it has been drastically accelerated and intensified. Now that we know exactly what globalization and violent crimes are, the reasons behind them and their effects, how exactly are they connected? Violent crimes and globalization are connected in the three following ways. First, by the relationship between industrialization and globalization. Industrialization is defined as the transformation from an agricultural based economy to one based on industrial manufacturing. It is considered as the main driving force behind globalization. A great example that illustrates this is the Industrial Revolution of the 19th century that started in Great Britain. In this revolution, large amounts of new energy sources, such as coal, steam and electricity, and new materials, such as cotton and wrought iron, combined to enable the creation of multiple types of technology such as the steam engine, which led to the steam boat and train, the airplane, and the telegraph. These new technologies led to globalization by decreasing not only the time it took to communicate with other cultures and communities globally, but also the effort that it took to transport goods, services, and people between them. Consequently, this globalization process in turn then increased interaction between different cultures and societies. This increased interaction has led to trade between the society and profit as a result. These profits are funneled back into their societies and contribute to fuel and further industrialization, which then improves technologies, which in turn improves globalization. However, industrialization has many consequences within the society that it occurs in. Throughout history, we've seen that as industrialization has been introduced, it has created a huge socioeconomic divide. Industrialization tends to result in a big gap between the rich and the poor due to the division of labor and capital, 
with the capital owning wealthy elites continuously accumulating wealth as a result of the labor of impoverished people. Industrialization can also lead to very rapid urbanization, with the migration of workers to cities to seek employment in heavy industry. <laughs> These two results of industrialization lead to an environment that invites violent crime to occur. The socioeconomic divide polarizes society, creating a dissatisfied working class who are unhappy as a result of their inability to better themselves and feel disdain for the privilege of our class elites. The urbanization brings these unhappy people together in smaller areas, rather than having them spread apart, which further intensifies the situation. A possible example of how this can create violent crime is in England during the late 19th century with notorious serial killer Jack the Ripper. At the time, London, where the murders occurred, was a highly urbanized and industrialized city. There was a huge wealth divide in Whitechapel, the area where the murders were committed, was a densely populated space filled to the brim with the poor working class. Jack the Ripper killed five female sex workers in incredibly gruesome ways, seemingly blaming them for something. His endeavors were also aided by the fact that he was afforded the opportunity of having victims due to there being so many lower class citizens in the area at the time. It has been hypothesized that he killed these women out of socioeconomic frustration, seeing them as an embodiment of his failed ambitions and frustration with his station in life. Unfortunately, even though the police had several leads, the Jack the Ripper murders were never solved. Although we will never know what truly motivated the Ripper to kill as he did, we can see how his crimes might represent his frustration and anger at the impact of industrialization resulting in the large wealth gap and socioeconomic frustration among the lower class of the time. We see this absolute fury resulted in the murders of these women. The second reason that violent crimes and globalization are connected is due to the political upheaval and social unrest created by globalization. Along with new cultures come new values. As I previously mentioned, cultures are the primary reasons behind people's behaviors and personalities. Almost every human behavior is large. As a result, people will develop ideas as a result of the culture that they were raised in. This is due to the innate desire of all human beings to fit in. Being familiar and blending in with the unwritten rules of your society makes individuals feel secure. However, these values differ drastically from culture to culture. Some key differences between cultures could be the principles of individualism versus collectivism, hierarchical social orders versus egalitarian social orders, or future-oriented versus short-term oriented mindsets. A great example of this would be getting on a bus in Mumbai versus in the United States. In the United States, one would usually find a bus station, wait for their bus, pay for their ticket with the attendant, and then board the bus and take a seat if one is available, usually not touching or speaking to other passengers. However, in Mumbai, this scenario would be drastically different. In Mumbai, after boarding the bus, passengers often have to push and sell, and in some cases, even yell at other passengers just to secure a standing spot, let alone a seat. In the United States, this would be extremely ill-received and perceived as completely socially unacceptable. However, in Mumbai, it is the norm. These cultural values mixing together are a direct result of globalization. The introduction of new cultures and ideas can create very cross-cultural issues. We see this in South Africa during the 20th century with a clash of Western ideals and the indigenous culture. The combination of Western culture introduced by colonialism and the indigenous poison community of South Africa exacerbated events such as apartheid to the point where violence was inevitable. Apartheid was a period in South African history in which non-white citizens were dominated and oppressed by the minority white population. The natives fought back against the attempts of the white colonizers to force their culture on them through apartheid, creating many tensions in this society. However, protests against apartheid weren't the only form of violent crime occurring at this time. During this time, the rate of robberies, rape, and homicide increased hugely. According to those there at the time, this was due to created culture of unrest and upheaval. People on both sides of the conflict felt unsafe and unsure, causing them to lash out via violent crime. To sum up, political upheaval and social unrest as a result of globalization create tensions in society by bringing about cross-cultural conflicts. Lastly, 
Globalization is connected to violent crime via the destabilization of traditional family values in societies. Many cultures pre-globalization had very family-oriented dynamics, with the family being the focal point of society. However, globalization contributes to the expansion of European and North American cultures, which have more individualist-centered dynamics due to colonization spreading Western cultures. In European and North American cultures, there is a definite lack of community, and families are often not close, creating a culture based on the individual. This is not the case in countries such as India and China that were later colonized, where family and community are very important. This expansion of European and North American cultures into ethnic communities, such as India, has the effect of weakening their national and cultural identities, and thus their family-oriented dynamics. With the weakening of family-oriented dynamics, comes the increase of loneliness and antisocial behavior in individuals. In 2005, Willow Martins and George Palermo investigated in a study if the effects of loneliness and anti associated violent antisocial behavior caused noted American serial killers, Dennis Nielsen and Jeffrey Dahmer to kill. <laughs> the results of their finding were conclusive. As a result of growing up in unstable homes with absent fathers, Dahmer and Nielsen suffered from feelings of loneliness and abandonment throughout their childhood and into their adult life. Due to their severe alienation, they behaved violently and antisocially. Another global example of this phenomenon is the case of Colombian serial killer Pedro Alonso Lopez. Convicted of killing more than 300 girls in South America from 1957 to 1990, Lopez was raised by a sex worker with 13 children and had no father. In interviews, he said he killed his victims as a way to be closer to them, presumably to feel the affection and care that he never felt during his youth. He also often spoke of the severe loneliness that he did not that he felt when he did not go. Alienation as a cause of deviant criminal behavior is also shown in a study conducted by professors Wells and Rankin in 1991. During my research, I reached out and had the privilege of speaking to them about their study, in which they discovered that the prevalence of delinquency in broken homes is 10 to 15 percent higher than in intact homes. Due to the disruption of the family centered dynamic in non Western cultures, due to colonization, broken homes are much more likely to occur due to societal values shifting from the community to the individual. In conclusion, there is most definitely a correlation between globalization and violent crime. We see this through the relationship between industrialization and globalization, with increased industrialization leading to higher rates of violent crime within societies. This is confirmed by the fact that this matches up with the Chicago School Theory explanation for the committing of violent crimes. We also see this through the political upheaval and social unrest created by globalization, resulting in tensions in society and globalization being connected to violent crime via the destabilization of traditional family values in societies, both of which confirm the social strength and typology explanation for violent crimes. Finally, we see this through the countries I mentioned previously, with extremely high rates of violent crime, such as Costa Rica, East Botini, Botswana, and the Bahamas. Although we cannot say for certain that the high rates of violent crime in these countries is a direct result of them undergoing globalization and colonization, features of globalization that have an effect on crime rates, such as industrialization, political upheaval, social unrest, and destabilization of traditional family values are present and this suggests that they have had a significant impact on these rates. Thank you. Thank you all so much. <laughs> I'm going to